Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to introduce plantar fasciitis. We're going to briefly talk about the relevant anatomy that's necessary to understand it, and then we'll talk about the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis. What you're seeing over here on the left is a plantar view of the foot, meaning the bottom surface of the foot. All this red tissue right here, these are the intrinsic foot muscles. And lying superficial to these would be the deep fascia. Now, on the plantar region of the foot, there's a thickening of that deep fascia. And this thickening of the deep fascia, which you see right here, is called the plantar fascia, also known as the plantar aponeurosis. Now, before we get into the functions of the plantar fascia, understand that there are three separate bands of this. Over here, we have a lateral band. Then we have the central band right here, and then a medial band, which comes off of the central band. Now, the central band of the plantar fascia is the main one that we care about, and this is the one that gets the name plantar aponeurosis. You'll notice that it originates back here off of the calcaneus, specifically the medial tubercle of the calcaneus. And then from the medial tubercle, it extends distally and then broadens. And from this broadening, it gives off five separate processes or branches to each of the five digits. Now, there is some variation in how the branching occurs more distally, but there are five major branches, and you can see those over here in the cadaver image. Here's branch one that goes to the hallux, branch two, three, four, and five. And distally, each of these is going to insert on deep, short, transverse ligaments of each of the metatarsal heads for each of the five digits. Now, there are two major purposes of the plantar fascia. One purpose would be protective. Obviously, the plantar fascia, the aponeurosis, lies superficial to the intrinsic foot muscles, but also to nerves and to vessels, and so it really provides an extra layer of cushioning for the foot, which is important because we're obviously weight-bearing on it, and walking and jumping and landing and so forth, right? But its other purpose is very functional, and that's in the windlass mechanism, which we're going to talk about right now. So here's a side view of the foot. You can see here on the bottom, this pink tissue would be the plantar fascia. You can see its origin at the medial tubercle of the calcaneus. You can see one of its insertions here on the metatarsal heads. But as you can see, there's an extension of it that also goes to the distal phalanx. And you can think of all of this as one continuous unit. So what is the windlass mechanism? The windlass mechanism takes place anytime we have dorsiflexion of the great toe, or you could think of that as extension of the great toe. So when the great toe extends, like you see right here, it actually puts tension on this portion of the plantar fascia. It actually stretches it. But because this entire sheet of fascia is one continuous unit, when you stretch this part of the plantar fascia, the whole thing stretches. The whole thing gets tension on it. And when this part of the plantar fascia down here gets tension on it due to great toe extension, it pulls the origin closer to the insertion, meaning it pulls that medial tubercle closer to the metatarsal heads. What that does is it allows the arch height to increase. And so this mechanism occurs anytime there's extension of the hallux at the MTP joint, and really the other digits too for that matter, regardless of whether it's active movement or done passively. An important note here is that this windlass mechanism occurs during the end of terminal stance through pre-swing whenever we're coming up onto the balls of the feet. And so this tension on the plantar fascia right here is going to increase the arch height. And when this arch height increases, these tarsal bones come closer together and they sort of lock, which provides a rigid lever so we can push off and go through swing phase. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, plantar fasciitis is due to a chronic stretch or tension on the plantar fascia that leads to irritation, and that irritation is normally closer to the origin right here by the medial calcaneal tubercle. The plantar fasciitis is going to be exacerbated by digital extension, especially near the end range of digital extension in both open and closed chains. And this makes sense because Digital extension activates that windlass mechanism, which puts further tension on that plantar fascia. And if you put tension on something that already has irritation, it's going to cause pain. 
And so examples of things that might activate that windless mechanism would be passive movement of the toes into extension by a physical therapist or someone else, or even closed chain ankle plantar flexion where you're coming up onto the balls of your feet. You would also see this during push off of gait. Really anything that activates the windless mechanism is going to further irritate that plantar fascia. So in a physical examination, what things would clue you in that somebody has plantar fasciitis? These are three big things right here. Number one is pain near that medial calcaneal tubercle. This is not for 100% of patients, but it's for the vast majority of them. The major pain they're going to have is just anterior to the calcaneus. So you can find that and then maybe put some firm pressure on this region of the plantar fascia right there, and it's going to cause pain. One of the reasons that the pain typically develops here is because this is really the thinnest part of the plantar fascia, so it's the most susceptible to irritation in plantar fasciitis. Number two, their pain normally is worse before any movement. It gets better with movement and then plateaus and eventually gets worse. So upon waking up in the morning or if they've been sitting for a while, the pain severity is going to be pretty high usually around its highest. But then as I start moving, it tends to get a little bit better. But it plateaus, and with continued movement, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And so if you have somebody whose pain severity kind of follows a trend like this, along with these other two things, there's a good chance they have plantar fasciitis. And number three would be a positive windless test, which is extremely diagnostic for plantar fasciitis. Despite a low sensitivity at 33%, the specificity is 100%. So if somebody has a positive test for this, you can pretty much guarantee they have plantar fasciitis. And this test can be done in one of two positions. It can be done weight-bearing or non-weight-bearing. We're first going to look at the non-weight-bearing version. The patient's either going to be in sitting or supine. And as you can see, the PT is going to stabilize the ankle right here, making sure that doesn't move. And with the other hand, they're going to passively extend the proximal phalanx of the hallux at the MTP joint. Again, by extending the hallux, you're activating the windlass mechanism. And so therefore, a positive test is going to be pain provocation in one of two spots. It could be at the origin of the plantar fascia, back here by the calcaneus, which is much more common. Or in some people, they may actually feel the pain at the MTP joint at the metatarsal head, where the band of the plantar fascia inserts. Either of those constitute a positive test. However, remember that it's more common near the calcaneus. You can also do the windless test in weight bearing. For this, the patient is going to be standing with their foot on a stool like this in such a way that the balls of the feet, the MTP joints, are just hanging over the edge of the stool and the toes are off the edge. Now, while stabilizing the ankle with the affected foot on the stool and the toes over the edge, the PT is going to passively extend the proximal phalanx of the hallux at the MTP joint. Uh, in this form of the test, because the foot is a lot more stable here on the stool, usually you'll just see people actually grabbing the end of the big toe and extending it up because you're still going to get extension at that MTP joint. Again, a positive test here would be pain provocation at the origin of the plantar fascia right here near the calcaneus or at the MTP joints near the metatarsal heads. So for plantar fasciitis, watch out for these three things right here. Overall, as you might guess, it's a pretty straightforward diagnosis. And once you have it diagnosed, you have to treat it. And that's what we're going to be covering in the next video. So make sure to join us then. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.